人口增长、城市化进程加速、经济发展以及对地球自然资源的压力等因素，威胁着人类、动物和环境的健康。More people live today in urban environments, and they've migrated from the rural areas to feed the cities. We need to produce more food. Intensive livestock agriculture. Uh, the raising of, of poultry or swine, particularly in peri-urban or close to the cities, in great numbers, is a perfect environment for disease emergence, as we saw with uh, H5N1 avian influenza in Southeast Asia. Well, livestock are the weakest link in global health. Um, livestock connects environmental health and human health in many different ways. And these connections are changing in a globalized world. We need to grow uh, much more efficiently uh, the livestock sector than we've done in the past. That means intensification is necessary, but intensification needs to be managed in a way that animal welfare, pollution, and also the disease issue, antibiotic issues, for example, are managed much more carefully. We live in a globalized world. Every day, there are hundreds of thousands of people traveling. For a long time, they travel long distances. An incubation period is the time when a patient uh, is infected, and until the time that person shows clinical signs. And that incubation period can be anywhere between days to maybe a few weeks. In the case of international travel, this occurs within hours. So you can become infected in one part of the world, and when you travel to another part of the world, a few hours later, you could actually develop the clinical signs in that uh, neighboring country or across the world. African swine fever, when it entered into Eastern Europe, was through the importation or of garbage that was uh, uh, fed to pigs, and pigs came down with African swine fever and today we have the disease spreading into several countries of Eastern Europe and threatening Western Europe as well as Asia. Because of the growth of the forest, the forest was killed. 致使人类、牲畜、野生动物之间的接触增加。Endemic diseases in a wildlife forested area have probably been occurring there for hundreds, if not thousands, of years. So when a new host, let's say a human or, or cattle, enter into that cycle, they may encounter new vectors or new pathogens that they have never seen before. Zika virus is an interesting example. Here we were expanding in certain parts of the world swine production in the midst of date palm cultivation, and by encroaching into the forests, we do encounter bats. The bats carrying the virus will contaminate the palm date sap. Humans and pigs that drink the sap or eat the fruits will be affected. With uh, more rains or more precipitation, we would likely see more bugs, mosquitoes, flies, ticks. And we know that some of these vectors carry microbes with them, whether it's dengue, malaria, Rift Valley fever or chikungunya. The livestock sector is very exposed to climate change. Also given the fact that a lot of livestock production is taking place in very marginal environments which will be particularly exposed to climate change. And that will affect the livelihoods of many of the partial list and smallholders that FAO is concerned about. The livestock sector is an important emitter of greenhouse gas emissions. But the more important fact is that the potential for reducing 
greenhouse gas emissions from the livestock sector with the wider application of available technologies is substantial. New viruses are constantly appearing. Old viruses may come back again. 穷人受到的威胁最大，所承受的负担最重。我们必须抓紧每一分钟，从源头解决疾病问题。The Food and Agriculture Organization and its partners advocate an integrated and interdisciplinary approach to global health. We call upon all stakeholders. especially the decision makers within governments, international organizations, civil society, private sector, research institution and academia to actively promote this innovative perspective to save lives and save livelihoods. Mm -hmm.